This game is tea and is not suitable for kids. <laughs> Don't let your kids watch it! Ah, spoiler alert! Hey there, honey! And guess. Yo, pipe down, listen up! Y'all have just been saying whatever works best for y'all! And the noisy one returns. That's that. That there's the footprints of the mighty Boozilla! They ain't just come. They ain't just some random holes dug up by the owl coot! Hmm. <laughs> I believe the true nature of these footprints has already been proven quite logically. Logic schmalgic, I ain't buying it! Say whatever you want, but I know what I saw, and I saw Muzilla. Is she referring to how she saw Muzilla out the window of the Grand Tower? Preposterous. Upon our journalist souls, we ain't having none of it! That statement is an insult to journalists everywhere. Yeah. Ah, oh, that's right. There's more to them monsters than just the footprints. I remember hearing that Sonny over there was seen within with the monster earlier. I reckon that gal over there said she witnessed it herself. When these two are together, all meaningful talk grinds to a halt. If we only knew just what the monster really was, I think those two would quiet down. Mr. Edgeworth, isn't there anything you can do? Isn't there anything we can do? I see this every single time. The monster's true identity. We don't have much choice. Let's see what we can do. Yeah, you see why Kay is my least favorite partner. She says the same thing over and she's, over. That's she's the kind problem. of pointless. Even when she's important to the story, she's kind of pointless. Isn't there something y'all can't tell us about the monster? Nicole, ask him. Ask him right now. Please settle down. Regarding the true identity of that monster, I already know what it is. Would you say? That's right. The video John recorded provided the hint that I needed. Sorry, my eyes. What you talking about? Miss Nichols saw Gordy. When she went to check up on John's practice. At that time, she mistook something for Gordy. The monster can be seen in this photograph. What? Ain't that just some plain old souvenir photo? Y'all don't really think you can pull the wool over the eyes of a pro like me, do ya? What did Miss Nichols really see that she mistook for Gordy? The tail? The tail? I don't know. Of the costume? I don't know. It's actually the uh, searchlight <laughs> for oh. the camera. <laughs> Naturally, Gordy's true identity was this camera crane. What? The video John recorded was shot from a fairly high up. A shot from this position would be impossible without a camera crane. But there ain't no way Miss Nichols would mistake a camera crane for Gordy. I wonder about that. Miss Nichols? Y yes. Earlier, you said that the prescription for your glasses didn't match your eyesight anymore, correct? I don't even remember that. Neither but do I. I. That was so many weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, lately it seems like my eyesight's suddenly gotten worse. Ooh, like me. So, would you say that you weren't able to see Gordy very clearly in the dark? That's right. Its silhouette was all I could make out. But, remember what Miss Nichols said? And I quote, Its skin was real scaly, almost like a reptile. The crap camera cranes ain't got no flesh on them, let alone skin. It's just a bare steel frame. That is certainly true. At least, in the case of this photo. However, last night, it did have skin. Y'all just doing whatever y'all can get in the way of our big scoop, ain't ya? That was not my intention. But, since I've come this far, it's time to put an end to your nonsense. Lotta, why are you in every game? Gordy's skin is right before our very eyes. This is the skin of Gordy that Miss Nichols saw. Was it the tarp? As Miss Nichols stated in her testimony earlier, it looked like it was going to rain last night. While it never actually rained, John still covered the camera crane with a rainproof sheet. Which to Miss Nichols, looked like a monster's skin. What? Y you gotta be kidding me! Isn't that right, John? Man, you saw through it all. Not bad, old man. Thank you. Unfortunately, the Gordy that Miss Nichols saw was nothing more than an, illu an illusion. Not again? Looks like my dream shriveled up and died once again. 
monsters aren't real. M mentor Seems like things have finally settled down. I really thought the boy was hiding something from me. Guess I had it all wrong. Now that we've figured out the true form of the monster, everyone seems refreshed. Actually, there's two people here who are totally bummed out. Oh, hey, Jelaine! Oh, uh, the report is in, sir! Oh, uh, we've got the results of President Juan's autopsy! Good! Show it to me! Contusions and bone fractures found across the body, resulting from tremendous pressure. So, this was the cause of death. In other words, he was crushed to death. I thought as much. Crime scene notes updated in my organizer. That's a brutal way to die. Yep. Jeez. The yellow stain on his chest is currently under investigation. But it seems that gunpowder residue was found on his right hand. Sunflower residue? I didn't know the president was into gardening. No, gunpowder residue. Traces of it are left behind when a gun is fired. Since it has been found on his right hand, it's possible that the president fired a gun. A gun, huh? We didn't find any guns when we investigated the area. Unexplained gunpowder residue. I'll have to look over the autopsy report later. And update it. Now that Agent Lane, it seems we have our answer. The president did not die from falling off of the roof at the Grand Tower. Rather, he died from being crushed under Mozilla's head. I can't deny it. Looks like your logic was right after all. This means the suspicions surrounding Miss Courtney should be cleared up, right? Yes. Not only the cause of death, but the time of death proves her innocence as well. Judge Courtney met with the president two nights ago. However, according to the autopsy report, the time of death was around 11 p.m. last night. Mozilla's head also fell last night. It matches up perfectly. That's a relief. How does that not end immediately? Isn't it a bit too early to be relieved, Agent Lane? The president died after being crushed by the Mozilla's head. That, I will admit. But the problem is, who was responsible for the falling head? Mozilla's head fell last night. And last night, the one who was at the film lot was... What are you saying? Surely you're not implying. That's right. You killed him, didn't you? John Marsh! That pup is hiding something. He was at the scene when the body was discovered last night. And he also saw the footprints. I mean, let's be real. I don't think he actually killed him, but I do think that it's round two of Cody where he saw something he's like, I don't want to even talk about this. This is just too traumatic. Hmm. And despite that, he still claims to know absolutely nothing about the incident. Isn't that a bit too convenient? These footprint-shaped holes have not been proven to be related to the case. Just because he saw the holes doesn't necessarily mean he's involved in the incident. You sure about that? Take a look at the pup's face. He looks pretty shaken up to me. It looks like he hit the mark, but John doesn't want to talk about it. If he doesn't feel like talking, then I have an idea of my own. Let's check the tape. Agent Lane, what is your intention? The police have a device that lets you analyze the video footage up close and personal. Agent Lane, you would suspect John enough to go that far? As long as John's lips are sealed, this may be the only way for us to get closer to the truth. Detective Gumshoe, if I'm not mistaken, you have that device with you, correct? Of course, I always keep it down my pants. Mr. Analysis is ready to go, sir! Now we're talking. I mean, well, guys... We use this in the prison case. Oh, see, guys' pockets are way bigger than girls' pockets. It's true. So we could fit it in there. Guys' pockets are like a new universe. And women's like, purses are as well. Women's purses can be, yeah. Professor... Professor. <laughs> Prosecutor Edgeworth, would you please perform the video analysis for us? She wants me to do it. Who knows what kind of faults that wolfman will find in it? This isn't exactly my strong suit, but I suppose I have no choice. Are there any new clues shown on the video? Dun, 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 dun. Greener. Griever? 
There's barely anything. Barely anything. There was blood on the saddle and blood, blood on, on the ground. Blood on the floor and blood on the floor and, uh, there's a person. Oh, hey, hey, president. Eureka! That's, that's creepy. Th this is... What's the matter? I want to see too. No, you don't. Hmm? <gasps> ah! Hey, what's wrong? Show it to me. Prosecutor Edgeworth, I request you submit the evidence to the court. Please take a look at the top right corner of the zoomed in video. Th this, this person is th the president. Impossible. Huh? No way. It seems we finally found it at last. The evidence that points to the true killer. This video places John at a major disadvantage. What's a little kid gonna do to the president with his buff arms? <laughs> oh no, what? Drop Watch a, out. a cow head on him. Watch out for the little kid with the horns! <laughs> <laughs> You're wrong! <coughs> and it's not right. Sorry, the milk makes my throat. Do Blech. you need a drink of water? I will in a second. I don't know anything about this. That's not gonna cut it. It's clear that you and the victim were together at the same place where his body was later found. John Marsh, there's no doubt you killed the president. No, this can't be. Why, why would you... John, please don't tell me. Did you really kill the president? Mr. Edgeworth, is this really decisive evidence? Mr. Prosecutor, looks like even you can't object to this. What would the kid gain from killing the president, though? Right. That pup said he didn't know anything, right? And yet, the president's right here in the video. John, what are you hiding? John, please tell us the truth. Truth is... The truth is... It's all my fault. John Marsh, what did you do? Mozilla's head falling off was all my fault. Ooh, boy. I mean, What's if it's happen here? accidental, like, it is what it is. I move we take a break to get water. Watch a break. All right, during the rehearsal. Well, I was setting up the equipment on the roof. I used the heater. After that, I went down to practice, but I forgot to turn it off. Then my mom called me, so I left the film on. When I came back to the lot after the phone call was over, Mozilla's head that was on the roof had fallen. And right next to it was the president lying dead on the ground. How can that be? I see. There were indeed traces that something had caught fire on the rooftop. It was just a small fire, so I was able to put it out by myself. So, the president's death was John's fault? But wouldn't that make this an accident, sir? And then, what did you do with the fallen head? I took it apart, brought the pieces up to the roof, and put it back together. <laughs> So, you put out the fire and even put the fallen head back on the roof. Which means you were hiding evidence. We can't be having that, you naughty little pup. Nobody would know that, though. I didn't do it on purpose. I really did just forget to turn off the heater. When the legs broke, the stand would have tilted. If Mozilla's head was on top of the stand... It would have fallen off. So the head fell down because of the fire. Yes. And if that's the case, I also have a pretty good idea what caused the fire. Why is it going it's so, so slow? slow? I'm gonna... There's a flammable can next to the heater. It seems someone is lacking in safety awareness. Was it really just an accident? If that's the truth, then what was the president doing here? I don't know. There was no one else around when I was there. You expect me to believe that? The president wouldn't have just come to a place like this without a reason, you know. Indeed, the president's reason for coming here is still a huge mystery. President? Two nights ago, he met with Judge Courtney on the roof of the Grand Tower. Truth is, he's just Tarzan. He just swung down Aww. the building. He swung down the building and then, like, landed. And then died, because he let go of the vine. Yeah. <laughs> and the last night, he was here at the film lot. Did he meet with John? I'll have to listen to John's testimony very carefully. This is what I think of America, John! Flips off. <laughs> I don't 
don't know what's causing that to lag. John, you are still young. I know it can get a little cold in the early spring, but you shouldn't have to resort to use a heater. It is precisely because he is young that he must make sure to take good care of himself. He's an actor. He's got to take care of himself. However, while it can get a bit chilly during this time of year, I wouldn't necessarily say... Hold it, old man. Why is it doing this? Maybe I'll have to look into that later. Is this really the right time to be having this argument? G Gah! He's completely right. John, you did well to get the better of Mr. Edgeworth. But please mind your language. Let's not forget that he got the better of you too, Your Honor. I, I know, Mom. So, um, where was I? After that, I went down to practice, but I forgot to turn it off. Best cross-examination music ever. You forgot to turn off the heater. You didn't check it before leaving the roof. I meant to turn it off, but I was too focused on practicing, so... It happens. And come on! Everyone forgets stuff like that sometimes! Yeah, I gotcha. I forget small things like that all the time, too. Like, sometimes, I'll forget to turn off the AC or the lights in Mr. Edgeworth's office. Or I'll jump off the ladder for his bookshelves. Or leave prank calls on his answering machine. <laughs> Why is it lagging so much? But forgetting to turn off the heater is really dangerous, so you gotta be careful. Some of those things had nothing to do with forgetfulness. John, please continue. Leaving prank calls? Looks like you've got a rough tool, old man. Well, back to my story. <laughs> Thank you, John. My mom called me. I'm gonna- I'm gonna leave it to- this game is so advanced that even emulation can't handle it sometimes. Yeah, it, it's true, kind of. It was late at night at the film lot, and not a single member of the film crew was around. So then, why did you have to leave the premises in order to answer the phone call? I totally forgot about the phone call thing, so I kinda panicked. If I didn't answer it fast, I would've been busted for leaving the hotel without permission. You already were busted for leaving the hotel without permission. In that case, why didn't you just answer it here? Because I was rehearsing and all the cameras and mics were on. If I had talked here, every last word I said to Mom would have been caught on camera. So he was embarrassed that the conversation with his mother would be recorded. Anyway, that, that makes I sense. stopped practicing for a bit and rushed out of the film lot. When I came back to the lot after the phone call was over... In that phone call, you lied and said you were at the hotel, correct? Why didn't you tell your mom that you were at rehearsing? If I told her that, she would have called the hotel and made them send a taxi or something. Of course I would have! A child alone on the streets at that time of night! What sort of parent would allow their child to be in such a dangerous situation? She's a good mom. <laughs> I, I like to think that Judge Courtney is a judge because she's like, single mom, gotta pay them bills. <laughs> mom, I don't want to eat Brussels sprouts. Overruled! You will eat the Brussels sprouts! <laughs> That would suck to have a judge for a mom. Maybe I, it doesn't, I don't know. I guess kids just don't understand how their parents feel. It goes both ways, Mr. Edgeworth. Indeed. Now then, John, please tell us about what happened after the phone call. Uh, yeah, of course. When the call was finished and I came back here... Rosilla's head that was on the roof had fallen! Was there any indication that the head was about to fall? I don't know. I was focused on my rehearsal. So you forgot to turn off the heater, which led to a fire on the roof. I would think you should have at least heard something. Heard something? Oh, I was wearing headphones, so... Headphones? Listening to the movie's soundtrack helps me get into the seat. That makes sense. I... yeah, if you have it available, that's cool. <laughs> Imagine practicing the Darth Maul lightsaber fight without Duel of the Fates in the background. <laughs> He had the music on full blast. This is going to turn into Larry with his stupid headphones, <laughs> and there's a gunshot! I it's... thought I he heard it between the DJs. <laughs> Puppy sh yeah, I, this is literally what that's going to turn into. Like, I had it on full blast, that's why I didn't hear anything. And yet, you noticed your mother's incoming call. I had my phone on vibrate, old man. That's how I noticed. Anyway, the head, the head had fallen. And right next to it was the president lying dead on the ground! What was the state of the body? I didn't get a good look, because it was dark. That 
was a freaking lie. Mm -hmm. He's suddenly become as quiet as a mouse. I guess John doesn't really want to remember anything about the body. Is that the only reason why he's gone so quiet? No, there were lights on there! Should I press him for more details? Yes! You didn't get a good look? Then how did you know he was dead? Uh, that's... well... He's clearly shaken. He must be hiding something. Wouldn't you normally call for help if you see someone collapsed on the ground? However, you did nothing of the sort. But... but he... he was already dead! Is that so? You seem quite certain that the president was already dead. Now, is there a reason for that, I wonder? The guy was collapsed on the ground. Right next to him was the fallen monster's head. I'm not stupid. It wasn't hard to imagine what happened. You can imagine whatever you want, but there was no way for you to know that he was dead. You actually checked to make sure the president was dead, didn't you? Uh, yeah, that's right. I was scared, but I got up close to the body and checked to see if he was breathing. I thought as much. However, why would he hide that? There must be a reason. Please tell me the state of the body at the time. At, at first, I didn't know he was dead. I would have realized sooner if he had been, if there had been any blood. But there wasn't a single drop, and his clothes were completely spotless. That's different. That's different from the picture. Yep. Either way, he wasn't breathing. That's how I knew he was already dead. Would you please append those statements to your testimony? Yep. So you, are, you immediately what's saw it. Because he's spotless. Yeah. That's he clearly had mustard be. on his shirt. Yeah, he had a he had a samurai dog on the roof <laughs> and then fell off because it was so good. His clothes were spotless. Yeah, that's right. You got a problem with that, old man? John, it is painfully obvious that you are desperately trying to hide something from me. W what are you going on about? I I I'm not hiding anything. You are hiding. Something about this yellow stain on the president's clothes, correct? <laughs> Why did you leave it entirely out of your testimony? The fact that you made no mention of it only serves to cast more suspicion upon yourself. Ugh. That's because... I hope you have a convincing explanation. <laughs> Judge Courtney? Allow me to explain. You weren't there! Why are you- The yellow stain left on the president's chest is almost certainly Lion Lily pollen. Lion Lily? When I met with the president on the roof of the Grand Tower two nights ago, not one night ago, he probably would have dry cleaned his clothes in between, <laughs> or heaven forbid had more than one pair of clothes. Nope, he, that's his inflatable suit, he needs it. <laughs> oh yeah. I brought him a bouquet of lion lilies. Lion lilies are beautiful flowers with stunning gold petals. Some of the pollen from the lilies must have gotten on the pre president's suit. Huh? But... I didn't see any lilies in the security footage, though. They were simply obscured by the president's beautiful, strong <laughs> arms! <laughs> wow! <laughs> Look, his entire arm is yeah, he's covering small. a bouquet of flowers! Ooh, you're just doing a little flex. Why did you bring a bouquet? Th that... I cannot say. She got the rat bouquet from the latest flower shop. She did. No, no. She the, proved the, she was smarter than Marshall. Secretly, <laughs> they were having a date night at the Samurai Dog Station <laughs> with the assassin. The she like, didn't know he was fat. No, the assassin's like, good day. I will give you a Samurai Dog each. They're like, oh, amazing like, date night. And then that's when the assassin like slips the, the oh. thing for her to have. like The, um, the lion movies, you mean? No, not the lion them. lilies. She brought those. That's when he, like, makes his plan, like, they're talking. He's, she's like, oh, I'm a single mom. I have my I have my son. He's like, hmm, there's one one child. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll, maybe that's the one. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, he goes from there to, to kidnap. Would you like some cotton candy? Would you like some cotton candy? <laughs> exactly. Hey, hey, you're keeping way too many secrets. Now, you won't tell us why you met with the president, or the reason you brought him flowers! It's cause she's got the hots for him! My apologies. However, I did give him the bouquet. That much is true. 
You don't give a guy flowers. <laughs> you give a guy bacon. Or like Amen. food. But when the president's body was discovered, we didn't find any flowers. I or I honestly sauce. don't know how that could be. Ha! Hey, Miss Judge! All your answers have been too vague. You can't say this, and you don't know that. Do you accept flimsy testimony like that in your trials? Hey, cut it out! J John! I threw the flowers away! You threw them away? So there were flowers near the body when you found it? Yeah, that's right. They were right on top of the president's body. They've been crushed as flat as pancakes, though. I see! So the flowers were squashed by Mozilla's head, too! They, someone needs to make, like, a paper mache version of that head, not a fully, like, 50-pound yeah. weight. Oh, no, it would have been way more than 50 pounds. If it, if it crushed someone to death. 200 pounds? Something like that. And a large amount of pollen got stuck up to the president's suit. That seems to be the gist of it. However, why did you go out of your way to dispose of the flowers? No reason. So John's not going to tell us anything either. I guess mother and son both have a lot of secrets, huh? What if, um, uh, the, the President Huang... President Huang? Because we don't, we don't know who Marshall's Huang. dad is. Like, Marshall? I could... Marshall? You mean Marsh? Yeah. John Marsh. John Marsh, not John Marshall. <laughs> um, we don't know who his dad is. I don't think it's the President, but like, she, like I said, she could have been looking for suitors or something. <laughs> I, you know, tired of being the single mom. That's it's hard being a single mom. It and absolutely like, is. And she's a judge. She doesn't have enough time for her kid. Like she wants to. Help How her. is she gonna have time for a dating then? No, but it unity, brother. Because because unity like, beer. <laughs> oh my god, not unity beer. No, but but like John's dedicated to his craft. He like wants to pursue acting, and like she doesn't have any time. She has to like keep calling taxis, like. If there was a guy, a nice, stable father who's nice, to just, like, help him out, drive the kid to practice, like, make sure oh. he's safe. Like, that's what she needs. She's looking for a chauffeur. She doesn't need love. She needs a husband. Like, <laughs> not necessarily loving. She needs someone to keep the family together and chill. Because clearly, like, she's had, she's had some problems or something because she's a single mom now. And there you have it. There you have it. That is not true. My entire theory has been disproven. <laughs> At the very least, I can tell you why John threw away those flowers. Huh? John, you saw me leaving the house with those flowers in hand, did you not? I get it. John saw the flowers and thought of his mom. He threw them away in order to protect Judge Courtney from being suspected. Th th that's not true! You're all wrong! I just hate flowers! I hate flowers so much! That was his worst lie yet. Man, Bouquet man, data man, jotted down man, in the man, organizer. Man, 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 man. Crime scene notes updated in the organizer. Crushed to death ah. with flowers! <laughs> <laughs> I often decorate our house with these flowers. The bouquet must have reminded him of me. So the pup just happens to find the flowers from his mother's bouquet on top of the body. That's why he threw them away and kept silent about the body. Ha! That's a tidy little story if I've ever heard one. It's a pretty legit one. What's wrong with that? I suppose you prefer untidy, messy stories, Agent Ling. Don't tell me you've forgotten already, Missy. This pup confessed that he caused the monster's head to fall last night. Ooh, that's true, but... He's currently the only suspect in the president's murder. We pin it on Penny. Oh, we we pin it on Penny. Pin it, we pin it on Penny for like the second time. <laughs> hmm. It is true that there are many reasons to suspect John. However, there is someone other than John who is far more suspicious. What did you say? John himself was kidnapped by that very person not too long ago. And we rescued him from the refrigerated warehouse near the harbor, pal. A refrigerated warehouse? That's right, pal. The refrigeration wasn't turned on, so he wasn't about to freeze to death. But if he hadn't yelled out for help, we would have never found him. Thank God. Once the sleeping drugs wore off, he was finally able to call out for help. Sleeping drugs. Huh. 
If I recall correctly, when you were kidnapped... That's right! There was a bottle lying on the floor of the refrigerated warehouse. I think it was the same thing that was used on me not too long ago. The sleepy ZZZ stuff. It's super powerful! Sleeping drugs data jotted down in the organizer. How about it, Agent Lane? John is clearly a victim. There is a mastermind at work behind the scenes of this case. I don't know anything about this so-called mastermind. You say they were here last night? I still don't know for sure yet. Ha! It's not like you to be so vague, Mr. Prosecutor. True. Indeed, I still don't have any evidence that ties the mastermind to this murder. Is there someone else? Is there anyone besides John who had the opportunity to murder the president? Penny Nichols! Blaze was there too. Mm -hmm. You're really going full ham on this Penny's actually the killer thing. <laughs> that would be an amazing twist. That's it. As I thought, in the end that pup is our only suspect. Isn't there one more suspect, Agent Lang? What's this? Didn't we prove it earlier? Last night, there was one more person here. Blaze to best. You're saying he's the one who did it? Last night, John was not alone. Blaze to best was here too. Shouldn't we consider him to be a new suspect? He definitely would do it. <laughs> Blaze to best. Killed the president? It's entirely possible. I mean, if it weren't for the fact that Blaze DeVest just loved his motorcycle more than anything else in life, <laughs> like, we wouldn't be able to pin him on anything. Basically. Blaze DeVest. Can't be. The same guy from 12 years ago? Hmm? 12 years ago. That keeps popping up. Well, a lot has changed. It all happened over 12 years ago. Back then, he and my old man were close friends, and our clan protected the president's life. Ling, don't tell me you're the one from 12 years ago. You got it. Ain't this nice? Now you're finally going to prison where you belong. 12 years is a long time coming for a suspended sentence, don't you agree? Agent Lane, what happened 12 years ago? Nothing that concerns you. On the contrary, it might just have some sort of connection with this case. <laughs> and I suppose you have some proof, huh, Mr. Edge, or, uh, Mr. Prosecutor? Show me evidence that there's a connection between this case and the one 12 years ago. Uh -huh. Evidence, you say? If you don't have any evidence, then there's no point in talking about it. Is there any evidence that connects this case with what happened 12 years ago? I mean, do you know? 12 years ago? So they said he mur- People murdered the entire clan, and then had to dig up something? Yep. According to the report. From... Yeah. Then you laid to bed yeah. in front of the flower bed 12 years Same ago. Same thing. I was like, it can't be- This is a report written by Patricia Rowland to Blaze de Best regarding Nightly. Please read this part here. That thing he laid to rest near the flower bed 12 years ago. That's not all. Take a look at this as well. This letter was sent to Jill Crane, who was murdered two days ago. Although the sender is currently unknown, here it is written as follows. Please get revenge for 12 years ago. Oh, so either would have worked. What? 12 years ago? Agent Lane, something big is happening here. Jill Crane's murder two days ago, and now the president's murder today. There has to be some connection there. And the key to solving it lies in what happened 12 years ago, does it not? You're asking me to reopen the old wounds of the Lane clan? Yeah, that's fine. Agent Lane, I beg of you. We're gonna get some CGs of people. Who was that just now? Shifu! You guys! What are you doing here? We follow you here, Shifu! We heard that Shifu was investigating the incident from 12 years ago. You idiots! I'm not your boss anymore. Get back to your own posts. Sir, we can't do that. What did you say? Are you disobeying my order? Shifu, we also beg of you. Reinvestigate the SSFI incident from 12 years ago. 
None of us could ever forget that case. We know how you feel the same way, Shifu. <laughs> you gave a present for my younger brother's wife, so good brother. <laughs> my case won't <one. laughs> fine. Agent Lane, even your former subordinates desire to reinvestigate the case. And you think you can solve the mysteries of that case? Perhaps I can. With your help. <laughs> I got it. I accept your invitation. Shifu! 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 There's only like three dudes. They're making that much noise? Now then! With that decided, I guess it's my turn to shine. Okay. We're investigating a case from the past, right? And guess what the best tool for that is? The little Mr. Thief. Right! If we have the case files from the past case, I can recreate it. Unfortunately, I don't have the case files. What? What do you mean? Access to those case files is restricted. It's being treated as highly classified information. Why is that? I don't know, but it seems like there were a lot of things that they wanted to keep hidden. Even what I know is limited to what was published in the newspaper back then. Oh, so anyone could have gotten it. That will not be a problem. In any case, please tell us what you know. Sure. Well, we'll have him tell us what he knows next time. Aww. This next part is actually, in my opinion, the best use of Little Thief in the series. Well, yeah, if it's doing something cool like that. Yeah. One of the best investigations, I think, coming up next. Anyhow, thanks for watching, everybody. Tune in next time. That's going to be a good time, and K is finally not going to be irrelevant. Yeah! Or actually, it's not really K is irrelevant. It's K's tool is relevant now. Look forward to that. Until we meet again, my friends, have a great day, and God bless.